Chapter 5 Where is my backpack? I heard Jason's shrill voice from down the hall. I was sitting in front of my computer after dinner, finishing the English paper. Downstairs, I could hear my little brother and sister crying, and I could hear Mom sounding very stern. I won't talk to you two till you stop crying. Now stop it, please. I tried to shut out all the noise that concentrated on my homework, but Jason popped his head into my room. Where is my backpack? He demanded. How should I know? I lied. I need it for tomorrow, and it's in my closet. Jason whined. I stared hard at him, thinking, thinking, and I realized where his backpack was. I left it up in the graveyard. It was right on my shelf, Jason cried, and I need it tomorrow morning. His voice was climbing higher and higher. Um, I think I might know where it is, I confess. I shut my eyes. I pictured myself in the graveyard this morning. I set the stupid backpack down against a tree. When I thought that a hand grabbed my ankle, my baseball cap flew off, I remembered. But I didn't stop to pick it up. I ran out there as fast as I could. And I forgot all about the backpack, too. Now what? Go get it, Jason demanded angrily. He tried to pull me up by the shoulders. You're not allowed to borrow my stuff. Go get it, Spencer, or I'm telling. I could still hear Remy and Charlotte crying downstairs, and Mom screaming at them to stop. If I tell Mom I took Jason's backpack and left it in the graveyard, she'll kill me, I decided. No problem, I told my brother. Calm down. I'll go get it. Why did I say that? Was I really going to climb out to High Grave Cemetery at night? Did I have a choice? I sent Jason back to his room so I could think. Then I paced back and forth in my little room. Three steps one way, three steps back, my mind racing. I can't go up there alone, I knew. Once again, I felt the cold fingers tighten around my ankle. No, no way I can go to the graveyard alone. I took a deep breath, picked up the phone, and punched Audrey's number. Could you do me a little favor? A blurry sense she picked up. A favor? Who is this? Spencer? Yeah, it's me. Can you come up to the graveyard with me for just a second? I need to get a couple of things up there. There was a very long pause on her end. Then finally, Audra said, You're joking, right? I told Mom and Dad I was going over to Audra's to, to do homework. Then I slipped out the back door, zipping my jacket against a cold wind that blew down from the hillside. I tested my flashlight as I shrouded through the backyards. It sent an orange circle of light over the frosty grass. Audra met me at the side of her garage. She wore a heavy down parka and she had her hair tucked under a wool ski cap. Are we really going up to the graveyard to get a baseball cap and a backpack? She asked, shaking her head. I already explained, I said, shining the flashlight in her face. It's the backpack I have to get. I never should have borrowed the stupid thing from Jason in the first place. We leaned into the wind and began our climb. The tall grass up the hillside was soaked from the forest of dew. Archer grabbed my arm, and we made our way up slowly. Frank called me right after you did, she said. Huh? What did he want? I asked. He wanted to borrow my history notes, but I told him I was going up to the graveyard with you. Audra laughed. Frank sounded really surprised. Why did you tell him what we were doing? I demanded. She shrugged, but didn't answer. We stepped around a clump of scraggly bare trees. Their limbs trembled in the wind, making a soft creaking sound. Why did you scream up in the graveyard this morning? Audra asked. Tell me the truth this time. Huh? Me? Scream? I, uh, thought I saw something. You don't believe in those graveyard ghouls you wrote about in your English paper, do you? Audra's green eyes studied me. No way, I muttered. I gazed up to the top of the hill grave, high grave hill. No strange flickering white lights tonight. No eerie mist. The moon floated low in a clear black sky. We stopped as we walked through the open gate. I swept my flashlight over a row of old tombstones. They tilted against each other as if asleep. I jumped as something leaped out from the bottom of a tall, narrow gravestone. A rabbit. Audra laughed. It's Spencer, you jumped a mile. It's only a little bunny rabbit. Let's grab the backpack and get out of here, I murmured. I'm pretty sure I left it near a double grave. A cloud rolled over the moon. I struggled to see as the graveyard darkened. 
I raised the beam of light and swept it along the rows of graves. I wish I bought a flashlight too, Audra whispered. I saw her shiver. It's so dark up here now. Just as close to me, I said. I felt as frightened as Audra did, but I never let her know that. The wind whistled as it blew through the gnarled old graveyard trees. The bare limbs shook and creaked. Tall grass brushed against the tilted gravestones, making a shh, shh sound. We made our way along a row of low graves. Oh! I cried out as my left foot sank into a hole. Pain shot up on my ankle. I rubbed the foot till it stopped hurting. I'm okay. Just twisted a little, I explained. I climbed the low rise and turned into the next row and spotted the backpack on the ground, resting against a bent old tree. I hurried over to it, kneeled down, and grabbed it with both hands. The dew had frozen on it, spreading a thin layer of frost over the canvas. I brushed it out with one hand. I could hear Audrey breathing hard behind me, loud, rasping breaths. What's wrong? I asked. Why are you out of breath? She didn't reply. I continued brushing the frost off the backpack, but I stopped when I heard leaves rustling in front of me. I raised my eyes to the sound. I gazed down at the row of tombstones as someone stepped out quickly from behind a tree. Who? I uttered, too dark to see. The figure moved toward me, taking long strides. Audra, I cried, finally recognizing her. What were you doing over there? But then a more frightening question burst into my mind. If Audra was over by the tree, who was breathing so hard behind me?